sight. Please stand by, Channel 1. Communications switching to Channel 1. All right, here it comes. Be ready. Switch controls to manual override. Yo, what's happening? It's Mikey. If you are interested in making a podcast, I cannot recommend Spotify for Podcasters enough. Dude, it is so freaking easy. Seriously, Spotify for Podcasters lets you create and then distribute your podcast, and you can even earn money from it, man. And you don't need any fancy equipment. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can just start creating today. And you can do video podcasts, too, like I do. Just download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Today. The Mikey Podcast. Yo, and welcome back to the one and only award winning Mikey Podcast, a wild ride through the latest news, crazy life stories, and everything in between. Anything goes on the Mikey Podcast, and you never know what you're going to get. Like today, while you've been distracted with all this Trump nonsense, did you happen to notice that the U.S. banks lost almost about $90 billion recently? It's a lot of money. Did you happen to notice the restaurant industry collapsing around us? Fuck, McDonald's closed all of its offices, all of its U.S.-based offices this week and told people to work from home if they can. Well, I'll tell you why. And did you know that the BRICS nations, do you even know what the BRICS nations are? I would probably have to explain that to some of you. But these nations are working together to create a common currency to destroy the U.S. dollar. And unfortunately, it seems to be working. And when things like that happen, it tends to lead to war, which is not something that we really, really want. I think we probably want to avoid war. We kind of have a lot of war going on as it is already. Would be nice to, you know, maybe end war. God. And oh, yeah, one other thing. This is like the most important thing you should probably know. Gas prices are about to fucking be higher than a giraffe's vagina. So stick around for all that. I'm going to give you all this information and I'll tell you why and, and how to get through. Actually, I can't tell you how to get through it. I don't know how to fucking get through it. I just want to give you this information because most of the stuff you see on the news is all about Donald Trump and that bullshit, which I'm not even going to get into. Maybe in a different episode, but not today. It's, it's, you, want to, you want to hear about that? Go turn on mainstream news. I'm, not, I'm going to tell you about the things that they're, distract, they, they're using this Trump thing to distract you from. God, people wonder why I smoke a little bit of cannabis here and there. Well, when I say here and there, what I mean is, you know, all day, every day. And thanks to my friends over at Higher Elevation who are literally doing God's work by delivering high quality cannabis right to your door. I can be just like Bone Thugs in Harmony and just stay high. You can too, especially if you live in California or if you're going to be in California anytime soon. Hit them up, higherelevation.com. See if they deliver to you wherever you're at, wherever you're going to be. Use promo code Mikey and save 20%. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this podcast right now, right before we get into everything. Okay, where do I begin? Oh, first off, it's Wednesday. Got to play the jingle, right? I feel like I have to. It's Wednesday, hump day. It's the middle of the week. You're overworked. Are you? And underpaid. Probably. And your boss is a dick. Well, you know, chances are your boss is a dick, and if you are the boss, somebody probably thinks you're a dick, but it doesn't matter. It's not going to matter much because chances are you're going to be fired soon anyway, especially if you work in America's collapsing beloved restaurant industry, which I guess I'm not even really sure is a bad thing. If you think about it, like America's restaurants are full of overly processed garbage, full of salt, fucking empty galleries. It's all trash anyway. But I guess on the other hand, you know, it's not a good look for our economy. And it's definitely not enticing any tourists to want to come and visit. Those guys don't even have any restaurants. Why would I go there? Plus, who wants a bunch of abandoned buildings all over the place? The whole country ended up looking like California. Uh, but it does seem that the restaurant industry in the U.S. has taken a pretty big hit with several major chains shutting down locations all over the country. Now, you're probably like, oh, of course, well, you know what happened? You know, we had the fucking pandemic, you know, supposed labor shortages, all this other stuff, the China virus, all these things happened. So, of course, maybe that's... You know, there would be some closures because of that. But it's more than that. It's way more than Let me start off with, let me tell you about some of these restaurants that are closing. Okay, let's start off with your friendly neighborhood Applebee's. All right, they've closed down over 300 stores recently. And according to Applebee's president, the, the, part of it is just because it's just too expensive to run the damn things. Like, we can't build anymore. It's too expensive to build. We don't, we can't, it's too expensive to run it. Nobody wants to work and people who do want to work suck. It is what it is, you know. 
That's just what's happening. But, you know, I got to tell you, we also can't let it slide under the rug that Applebee's pretty much sucks now. You know what I mean? Like in the 90s, it was fine. It was, you know, it was, it was actually, it was pretty good. But now it's just, it's trash. I think you'll see this as I go through this, as I talk about these restaurants and stuff, that most of these places were pretty great at one point, especially in the 90s. And then I don't know, either they went to shit or my taste buds changed, which I don't think that's what it was. Uh, because and I'll give you an example because, uh, why I think it's the latter that they went to shit because I'm Buffalo Wild Wings, who also just so happens to be on this collapsing restaurant list. This place used to be great. Their food was is still okay, I guess, as long as you can get it fresh. Good luck with that. And don't even bother going, though, because the fucking service is unbelievably terrible. Now, all right, to be fair, over the past few years, my fiance, my wife and I, we, we've been to B-dubs. I don't know. We, we kept going and kept giving it another chance. Kept giving it, it's because it's really the only decent wing place besides one local bar here in Sacramento. Sully's, for those of you who are local or going to be coming in this area. It's a, Sully's in Rockland, California is a great place to go. It's a good time. The food is delicious. The wings are great. But sometimes you don't want to go to that bar. You know what I mean? There's reasons. It's a little loud. It gets a little rowdy sometimes, depending on the day. And so, I, you know, you just want to go to beat ups and it's close and, you know, they're consistent. They used to be. The food was always consistently good no matter where you went to. And then it just went to shit and the service was really bad and you'd go and you order your food and it was like it would take forever and you'd only get half of it. It was it was honestly it was terrible. But we kept going back and kept giving them another chance. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because recently, maybe the past couple of weeks, I don't remember how long ago it was we went. It was good. The food was good. It was fresh. We got everything that we needed. Or everything we asked for, and uh, the, the the service was good. So I can't, and I don't want to. I don't want to complain too much, but you know, it was at least it maybe it seems like maybe they're getting better at least around here. Sorry, I'm getting distracted because I was actually looking for a certain button that I wanted to play. And oh, there it is. That's the one. I gotta have that ready for something that's coming up. Um, do you know what that was? Let me see. Can you guess what that was? Like one more time. Do you know what that is? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. You'll find out a little bit later. Anyway, B-Dubs closed down uh, about 45 restaurants recently. Denny's, God, that place was terrible. But Denny's used to be awesome, especially in the 90s. Remember when they when they had those old ladies on the commercials? Lenny's, they, one lady would call it Lenny's, and the other lady would get Denny's, and they get mad at each other or whatever. Anyway, they closed like 150 locations. Um, and by the way, their coffee makes me poop. I know, it sounds crazy. But I'm serious. If you like D Denny's coffee is is literally a laxative. If you ever need to poop, if you're struggling with your bowel movements, make your way over to Denny's. Have a cup of coffee. That'll clear your right up. I promise you. I told you. I'd eat it. There it is. Poop talk. Poop talk. That's what it was. Poop, poop, poop. Come on. Pay attention, people. Is it like we hear that. That's the beginning of the poop talk. Anyway, you should know these things. If not, that means you're not paying attention. Quiznos is another one that closed. God, remember those guys? Remember those weird commercials they had? Quiznos subs. They had those weird looking. What were those fucking? They looked like Furbies. Or like, it was actually what it looked like was like a methed out Furby. Like if you took it, like if a Furby was, you know, a fucking drugged up for a couple years, that's what the that's what the Quiznos sub character thing looked like. And it would be on the TV. Eat Quiznos subs. I like Quiznos subs. Do you, am I making this up? This really happened, right? Like that's not. I mean, that was real. I didn't just make that up, did I? Fuck, higher elevation getting to me. Anyway, uh, they closed 5,000 locations. I didn't even know they had that many, dude. They had 5,000 locations. They closed them all across the U.S. And as of just this past, past March, March 14th exactly, they have 153 locations left. They're all in, like, shitty gas stations in Arkansas. But who needs Quiznos anyway when you got Subway, right? But Subway's is closing down all over the place too, man. Subway closed more than 5,000 stores. But Subway's got like 30 million stores. There, there, I think they had. there's more Subways than there is Starbucks and McDonald's. So I think they're doing okay. Uh, and then that brings me to TGI Fridays, which it's just the all but disappeared, to be honest with you. They're on the verge of fucking distinction. But again, that goes back to some of the other ones, Applebee's and whatever. Is it because... Is it because the economy? Is it because people don't have money? Is it because your service sucks? Is it because your food sucks? Like, what happened? I can't... I have no... I don't know. I think... What I think doesn't matter because that's not what this episode is about. I don't want to get all caught up with in, into why I think these restaurants have gone downhill, but it's just not good. With all these stores closing, that means that a lot of people are going to be out of work. And that's even worse for America. What are these people going to do? Oh, I know. Just go get another job, right? Just go find a job. It's a job everywhere. Go get a job. That's what everybody said. I was one of those people that said that when I had a job. 
This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Shipping can make or break a sale, so optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. This episode is brought to you by JLL. Get an insider view into the world of commercial real estate with JLL's podcast, Trends and Insights, the Future of Commercial Real Estate. Whether you're curious about making cities more sustainable, the evolution of office space, or AI opportunities, this podcast will help keep you a step ahead. Tune in for candid conversations with business leaders about the biggest trends impacting how we live, work, and play. Subscribe to Trends and Insights now at jll.com slash podcast. Like, for the past couple of years, you know, on the radio, it's like, well, just go get a job. Go drive. Go do something. Go get a job. Everybody's hiring. That's bullshit. All these places hiring. Do you know how many applications and how many resumes I put out there? I haven't got anything. I thought it would be super easy to get a job. Man, I have a stellar resume. It is beautiful. Dude, I have awards and recognition to back up all my skills, a track record and winning ratings, amazing social media skills, but none of that shit matters, and I don't understand why. Maybe it's because I'm an asshole. That's probably what it is. I, I can accept that, and that's fine. But other people are struggling just like me. So is everybody an asshole? Probably. Who knows? I have no I can't even get a job doing deliveries. I'll deliver weed. Well, that might be a little difficult. But who knows? I'll do something. <laughs> it's, I'm just saying it's not that easy to find a job. That's It's really hard, especially when you work in, in tech and media like myself, dude. Don't even get me started on on what AI is doing taking over the these these two worlds honestly we're just at the beginning of ai and it's looking pretty grim for the human race As, you think about radio there is a company that is designed that is using ai technology to 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 have to not even have to have a radio personality anymore so what you'll get is is just a an ai voice that has been digitized to sound almost exactly like a human with with just it basically using AI to scour the internet in a local area and make it sound local and localize stuff and say things that you don't even need a person involved anymore. And it'll, it'll post to social media for you. It'll do everything. It is AI. Literally. It's terrifying. It's honestly, it's, it is. <laughs> I hope that you people don't fall for that. I really, really do. Now I use, I'm not going to be, I'll be honest with you. I use AI in, in some things, but it's more to just kind of to help with, with creative thought starters, just to kind of help me manage some stuff a little bit easier. Uh, if you're following me on TikTok, which you should be the Mikey podcast, you'll see that I've been posting a lot of news stuff up there and I use AI to help me write that and break it down really short. So, cause it's just short clips, but it's not, it's not taking anybody's jobs away. It's actually just helping me get things done a little bit quicker, but AI, it can be useful. But it's going to ruin a lot of lives. I can see this already. It's just, it's just not good. It's bad for the human race. But I'll save all that for another episode. I don't want to get, I don't want to get too far into that because that's too much. But listen, since since January of this year, January first of this year, one thousand one hundred and thirty companies have announced layoffs. I'm talking uh, Accenture. They they nineteen thousand people. Amazon eighteen thousand people. Uh, Alphabet, which is, is Google or whatever, twelve thousand people. Microsoft ten thousand people. Meta ten thousand people. Uh, who else? We got Disney, 7,000 people. Dell. I mean, it's just thousands and thousands and thousands of people. ABC, Spotify, Sirius XM, Odyssey, iHeart, NPR, Salem. All of these people. Say, when I say Salem, it's another radio group. It's, it whole, owns hundreds of radio stations across the country. TV stations as well. All of them have announced riffs. A reduction in force. So if you hear the word riff, it's not it's not a good thing. Like when I was growing up and someone said, hey, you hear that riff? You think about a guitar. <laughs> No, it's not that anymore. This means people are getting fucking fired. Again, this is not good, people. This is bad news for America. And this is all the stuff they're not you're not hearing about on the news. Why? Because you're being distracted with Donald Trump's stupid hair going to jail. Nobody cares. Okay? Well, people do care, but it's not something 
there's a lot of other important things going on because all of this, I, I, I can't guarantee anything, but all this Donald Trump stuff is going to blow over at some point. He's not going to go to jail. He's really, really not. He's not going to go to prison. There's no way. I promise you that. <laughs> okay, I don't. I can't promise that because I don't know for sure. But I don't think he's going to. But this is the stuff that you're being. Why, this is why you're seeing Donald Trump and stupid shit in the news so much, and not this. All right. Uh, let's see. Where was I? Now, one of the, oh yeah, one of the biggest employers. I got to talk about this McDonald's thing. This is crazy. Uh, so all, all these all these companies firing people. You got all these restaurants closing up. All of these tech and media companies letting people go, going through rifts or whatever. Now, one of the biggest employers in America is going to be firing a shitload of people. Thousands. All right, well, who could it be? If it's not Meta, if it's not, you know, Google who's already firing 20,000 people, whatever, who could it possibly be? I'm talking about McDonald's. I know you're like, well, fuck, who the fuck cares? But McDonald's actually employs a shit ton of people. And McDonald's is making some changes, according to a recent report, that the fast food giant has temporarily shut down their entire U.S. office base. All right? Sent everybody home. It haven't been open this whole week. They, they, I guess they announced this last Friday that they were going to, that nobody was to come in on Monday. They wanted everybody to work from home. And why? Because they're getting ready to lay off a bunch of people. Like, they literally closed their offices so that they can fire people. Now, apparently, McAdee's is shifting their focus on digital operations. Well, this could be a good thing or a bad thing. I guess it depends on how you look at it. But again, AI taking over the world. So digital and delivery services. So I guess that means I'll have to start ordering your supersized Big Macs and extra large Diet Cokes through apps or whatever. You don't even have to move. You don't have to get out. Of, you don't even have to leave your house now. To go get their food. I just feel myself getting fatter just thinking about it. Uh, but they're, they're, McDonald's obviously is facing a bunch of competition from place, other fast food places like Chick-fil-A, Shake Shack, which is thousands of times better than McDonald's. It's better than In-N-Out. If you haven't had Shake Shack, dude, get off your ass and go get a real burger because it's better than all that other stuff. Plus, you got Chipotle and all these fast casual places that are way better. And so McDonald's is like, what the fuck do we do? We don't know what to do. So here's what we do. We have a riff, reduction in force. We got to save money. We got to rethink things. So they're going to be changing their entire business model. And at the same time, they're going to fire a shitload of people. And here's the one of the worst things about all this. The reason why they wanted to send everybody home was so that they can fire them remotely. They, they told their staff that tough decisions had to be made. And in order to be more efficient and navigate this difficult time, they will be utilizing an AI type of program to notify people of their the fucking demise, of their death. The McDonald's AI robot is going to come and eat you, and then you're going to have nothing left, and then it's going to shit out McDonald's burgers. That's what's going to happen. Everyone who used to work at McDonald's is now going to become food, and then you're going to eat it because the AI robot is going to force you to do it. This is, this is, I got to do, do a whole episode, episode on AI because it's fun, but it's also terrifying. I don't think people realize uh, where we're headed with this. They, 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 they're just going to have a robot fire everybody. So they don't even have to look at anybody. They don't even have to have face-to-face -face conversations, nothing. You don't have to see the crush that you're, you don't have to see somebody's life complete, be completely ruined right in front of you. When you say, I'm sorry, Joe, I know you've been, in the corporate office at McDonald's for 24 years and in about six months, you were going to be able to retire and get full, whatever the fuck. Unfortunately, we're going to have to let you go. No, no. What's going to happen is just you're going to get an email from a robot that says you no longer work here anymore. Your, your key fob has been shut off and this is your severance done sign here. So no people involved at all. I, I looked, I guess that's a good look for the, for, for business, but, not, not for humans. It's bad. But in all seriousness, this is a really tough time for people affected by, by layoffs. Me, you, whoever's listening, and, and it's only going to get worse. More and more layoffs are coming, people. I promise you this. So it might be a good time to start maybe hoarding some cash. Well, that is until it becomes useless. I don't know if you remember me talking about this, but you should. I told you to go to look into the CBDC. How many of you did that? Did you guys, did, did, did you do it? Because sometimes I tell you to do shit and I know you don't do it. I'm like, what, what? I'm not telling you this for my fucking health. I'm, I'm telling you this because you need to learn about it. So let me try to break this down for you real quick. Like you're fucking 12. All right. So, so you know how you use money, like dollars, euros, whatever, cash, money, cash, money. 
cash money. Well, the CBDC is basically just a dig digital version of that money, but it's controlled by the government. So like sort of like how, you know, Bitcoin and Dogecoin, all those are digital versions of money. You can invest in them or whatever. Only those coins don't have like a central bank. They don't have central control. The CBDC will have a central bank control. So the government will have complete control over it. It's like the government made their own version of, you know, your kids Robux or whatever. The, the, it's just it's just fake money. You know, it's not even real. This is digital. All right. So I, I it's it's not good. Again, I think that's to be the theme of this episode. It's not good. All right. They say that 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 by doing this, by having this digital, this CBDC things, it will make things more convenient. It'll make it easier, and payments can be instant. What is it? What is it? It's happening right now, by the way. Uh, it's called Fed Now. You can look into this. You can Google it. It's it's up on the. This is a government program. Uh, Fed Now. It is. It started this week. It's going to take some time, but I believe by July it'll be full in full effect. I'll explain to you what that is here in a minute. Uh, but but this CBDC is a way, really, some people think that the government could just be spying on our spending habits and kind of control how we use our money or even shut your money off if they want. Say you post a, you know, I don't know, just get it, you know, just throw it out there. You know, it's not nothing personal, nothing real. It's, it's never happened to me or anything. You know, just say you post a, I don't know, a funny meme about Hunter Biden and they don't like it. Well, <laughs> The social credit score kicks in and takes all your shuts off your bank account. You can no longer spend any money. You can't post on Facebook. You can't post on Instagram for 30 days. You can't even leave your house now. For 30 days. That's where we're headed. I know that sounds a little drastic, but I think that's that's what they're doing in China. This is and this is literally being modeled after China. We're literally following in China's footsteps in this exact thing because that's what they're doing. So anyway, it's like a digital cash, all right, but with the side of Big Brother watching. You know what I mean? And you should really, really, really be worried about this because we're headed there and banks are failing and not sure if you're aware of this or not, but they really are all around us. They are. And once more and more people start to realize that these banks are failing and people start saying, stop, I don't give a fuck about Donald Trump. What else is going on? And they turn on, you know, I don't know, some other on mainstream news, like maybe let's just say a podcast called, I don't know, the Mikey podcast. They turn on and they realize, wait a second, banks are failing. What is this asshole talking about? And then they listen and they're like, oh my God, he's actually speaking the truth. He's not lying. But when more people start to realize this and then they go and they start to take their money out of the bank, they're not going to have any money there. Or everyone's going to take their money and more banks are going to fail. So then what will happen? The government will close the banks. Then they will create this digital currency, like I said, which is already being created and is on its way. Uh, it well, should be taking full effect by July. It's not going to make your cash disappear overnight or anything, but it's a gradual loss of cash, turning us into a cashless society. There's already places you can go to right now. Last I read, there was there's like national parks in America that aren't even taking cash anymore. You know, there's, there's, it, it, it's just, it's happening everywhere. I've been to gas stations. I've been to 7-Elevens. Oh, no, no cash. What the fuck you mean? No cash. You know, why? Oh, we don't, you know, the shortage. Shortage on what? There is no shortage on pennies. Get the fuck out of here. Keep your pennies, man. Let me use my cash. But that's what's going to end up happening. We'll be, they will replace it soon. They will replace the cash that you have with your digital currency and your cash that you have will become worthless. So maybe hoarding it, hoard it now and go buy gold or something, I guess. Get it out of the banks. Let's let's speed this process up. Let's collapse all the banks right now. Go to your bank today. When you're done listening to this podcast, take all your money out. Uh, subscribe to the Mikey podcast and send it, send me all your money. I'm just kidding. Bye. <laughs> Bye. No, you can send me money if you want to, but buy gold. Don't take investment advice from me. I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to that. But I do think that gold, if you're going to invest in something, gold seems like probably the best idea, right? I know, I know you think that sounds crazy, but this is happening. It's going to happen. It's, it's just a matter of time. And the recent banks, honestly, it's we've like I said, banks are collapsing all over the place. The recent collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, and Signature Bank. I mean, some of you are like, what are you talking about? See, these are the things that you're being distracted with. Or these are things you're not seeing on the news because you're being distracted with stupid shit. So these banks have collapsed. And because of this collapse, like they've caused a massive surge in withdrawals on the top 25 U.S. banks. So when I said at the beginning of this podcast, they've the U.S. banks, top 25 U.S. banks have lost damn near $90 billion. That's a lot of money. 
But but don't worry. It's fine if they lose money. According to U.S. regulators, they believe that that's that represents stabilization. What? In what world? Where are you living? Like, th- what kind of cr- bullshit is that? Stabilization? How how is that stable? Everybody goes and takes their money out, but the banks are stable. You can sleep easy knowing that the banking industry is completely stable. Trust me, I'm from the government. <sighs> That's not good at all. Plus, there's that bank. Was it ANZ? I believe is what it was called. It's like one of the biggest, one of the big four banks in Australia. They completely halted people taking their money out. They're not allowed to withdraw or even deposit in some of their branches. This is signaling an end of cash. I'm telling you right now. Australia will start doing it. It's already happening all over the world. And it's just a matter of time before we're all spending CBDCs. What are they called in in, in Sims? The, the Sim dollar. That's basically what it's going to be. Because after all, who needs cash when you can use your handy dandy central bank digital currency? You can buy your coffee and donuts and your you can order your 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 McDonald's. You don't have to leave your house. Everything's digital now. It's all you're digital. Put on your glasses, put on your your VR headset and never leave your home. Work remotely, which sounds fantastic to some people, but you know, make sure you get outside. Make sure you go get a little sun, vitamin D. <laughs> I I know I try to make this shit sound funny and and just be somewhat entertaining. The fact is this this stuff is terrifying. Excuse me while I take a drink of water from my very awesome VW bus. Uh, what are these things called? Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chilling by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations. Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry Bahamas. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right. New music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Tumblr? Somebody sent me and my wife these for our, our, our wedding. I have no idea who sent that to me. If you're watching this podcast and you sent this to me or you're listening to this podcast, thank you. I love it. I really do. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, you can buy your coffee with your fucking stupid CBDCs. A lot of people are concerned about this, though, as you should be. You know, I'd be, I'm a little concerned about a cashless society, okay? It could make your money more susceptible to technical issues. Think about that. If, we, if everything went digital, people could fucking hack into your shit. What if the power goes out? What if there's an EMP attack? Then what? Also, besides that, which may be conspiracy thinking, but this also might be too. You're, I know I realize we're being tracked with the money that we spend when we use our debit card. Sure, I get it. I get it. But you can spend cash without being tracked. All right? If there's no cash, that completely eliminates the freedom to spend your, your money however you please, however you see fit. But hey, I mean, whatever. If you're okay with the idea of a programmable currency that the government can use to control what you buy, then go ahead and continue to blindly follow the herd. Who cares? Nope. You turn this podcast off and move on with your life because I am not the person for you. And it doesn't matter anyway because whatever money you do have is going to go right into your gas tank. Oh, what? Here we go. Back to the gas prices again. Gas prices are about to skyrocket, dude. And I'll tell you why. It's because the oil cartel OPEC is back at it again, fucking around, making production cuts, which is probably, but it, it's America's fault. Listen, Russia and a bunch of other big oil producers have announced that they will reduce crude oil production by 1.6, I'm sorry, 1.16 million barrels per day. That's already on top of the already 2 million barrels they stopped, they cut back in October. So now we're pushing almost 4, 4 million barrels a day being cut. These cuts are supposed to stick around all year, so you know exactly what that means. That means we get to look forward to higher gas prices for the foreseeable future. Thanks a lot, Brandon. Yes, it is Brandon's fault. They're doing this because 
of Brandon. The Brandon administration has been catching some major shit for not wanting to refill America's st strategic petroleum reserves, the SPR. Remember, we 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 released a whole bunch of this uh, er, uh, late last year when it was like right before right before the election, or actually it was leading up to the election. We kept releasing a bunch of our strategic petroleum reserves so that gas prices go down. Gas prices barely went down. Our we dwindled our petroleum percent, which is about we lost almost forty percent of it, um, just to bring down gas price. And he hasn't decided to refill it like nah fuck it we're not going to refill it so the, the oil company's like what the fuck you mean you're not gonna refill it? you need to be buying more oil from us if not we're gonna we're gonna screw you over and all of your citizens and that's exactly what they're doing the big wigs that over at opec are pissed and they saw this they're like oh, this is a sign of weakness in america so they decided to cut, cut production production even more which is going to affect all of us. So what does that do? What does that mean for us regular folks who just want to fill up our gas tanks without breaking the bank? Good luck. Because all your money is going to gas. And to round out the future destruction of America, the BRICS nations are planning on, are pl actually planning to take on the American dollar, or the big bad bully of the financial world, as they like to put it, the U.S. dollar. So BRICS is Brazil, Russia, India, and China, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Okay, they're all working together to create their own common currency and challenge the greenback's global dominance. And, and honestly, in their eyes, who can blame them, dude? The U.S. has been throwing sanctions around like a toddler throwing a damn ten temper tantrum. Okay, and in, in, in them, to them, it's like, dude, it's about time someone stood up to us. But that's no good. Okay, because again, this this is not good. I swear to God, I should call this episode, this is not good. But that's not, I don't know what I'm going to call it. Maybe I will call it that. Who the hell knows? Uh, when things like this happen, it only leads to war because America does not fuck around. When people do that, that's called fucking around when people do stuff like that. And what America does is it makes you find out. So fuck around and find out. But I'm a little nervous because these people are very seriously fucking around. All right. And I don't want to get ahead of ourselves because I, I'm not saying like I'm not saying we're headed to war. But if it does happen, if they do successfully create a currency, which, by the way, is not exactly an easy thing to do. The, the, the BRICS alliance will need to follow all the laws of each individual nation, and they have to back their currency with gold or some other precious met metals. Now, if they do, or if they are able to do that, there will be a war. I 100% guarantee, promise you, there will be a third world war. Not that it's probably going to happen anyway, but I promise you that is going to be the case because, as I said, America, does, you don't fuck around with America fuck around and find out and that's what's happening right now uh but of course like i said america's not gonna and not gonna take this lying down we're gonna be fighting tooth and nail to maintain our position at, at the top but the dollar shares are are going down all right we've literally our global foreign exchange reserves have fallen below 59 percent and the the it, it honestly seems like the de-dollarization of the world is gaining some serious momentum this is the furthest it's ever gone in history. This is kind of a scary thought. Is this the beginning of the collapse? These are the things you need to be keeping your eye on. You know what I mean? Who knows? Maybe one day we'll be trading in digital rubles or the yuan or, I don't know, whatever, instead of dollars. And that would certainly put Uncle Sam in his place, now wouldn't it? But until then, my friends, be prepared for financial riots, market crashes, and of course the inevitable end of the human race because of AI. And in order to stay ahead of all of it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. For less than 10 cents a day, you will be the knower of knowers amongst all of your friends because you will be prepared with the news that's being ignored by the mainstream media and as they dangle the little distraction carrot of Donald Trump and aliens. Pay attention to the Mikey Podcast. I'll keep you informed. Link in the description of this episode or just go to MikeyPodcast.com. Don't forget to follow on all the socials. As I said, I'm using TikTok more, but it's more for news. So I was like, just I've just kind of just keep been posting little short news breaks and breaking news updates throughout the day. So you can stay on top of your news. It's quick. It's fun. Follow me on TikTok. All the links, everything you need, or just search for the Mikey Podcast. And also like, follow, share, all the things. I appreciate you. Have a great day, everybody. See ya. The Mikey Podcast.